is it going guys Linux today back with another pros and cons today's pros and cons we'll be taking a look at pros and cons of running Ubuntu or an Ubuntu based Linux distribution so I've got a couple virtual machines for this video this is just Ubuntu 1804 we're gonna start out with so let's get into it so what's new in Ubuntu I just installed this and booted it up so just see if I can get rid of this there we go so we're gonna start with pro and then go to the cons so I'm gonna do three pros and three cons of each Ubuntu is a very widespread Linux distribution one of the most popular out there actually so pro number one it's easy to install and use it took me like um, 30 seconds to get it to where just installing files and then that, the installing files took a while obviously but this is just the base system and installed right up everything's all laid out they got rid of uh, they got rid of unity as their desktop and put gnome on it I'm not a big fan of that I liked Unity on Ubuntu a lot better than GNOME, but that's what they did. So, pro number one, easy to install and use. That goes for most of the uh, Ubuntu-based distributions, like Linux, Mint, Elementary. We will get to those, actually, in a little bit, but easy to install and use. Number two for pros is it's stable. Unlike Arch Linux, when you go run an update, let's go boot up a terminal here, and then just do a run an update, um, there's not really a high chance that the update will break the installation. So, that is that. It's harder to, um, harder to break than an Arch Linux or Arch based distribution. So, very stable, built off Debian. Debian is known to be one of the most stable out there. So, if you are planning to run a server and you're looking at Ubuntu, Ubuntu server is an option out there. It does not come with a desktop environment like GNOME or whatever comes with another distribution, but that is there. It's very stable. And then pro number three, it is very customizable. Let's go into the system settings in Ubuntu, and then I'm going to take a look at settings and some of the other distributions I have for this video. So we're gonna go to settings. I'm not too familiar with the new gnome, um, the new gnome, so. So backgrounds, we got plenty of options actually. I'm just gonna go ahead for the video and pick the uh, the skyscraper, like the uh, skyline right there. For the lock screen, I'm gonna pick this uh, the floor or the uh, I don't know what you want to call that icon size, self-explanatory. You can have the bar at any corner, except for the top. So left, bottom, or right. Does not give you a top option to have the bar up here. That's probably because of the wing, wing panel up there. Okay, I'm not too familiar with customizing Ubuntu with uh, the GNOME. I know you could get some pretty heavy um customizing in 16.04 with the uh, Unity desktop. But, I don't think you're going to get much more than just changing your background, unless you install another desktop environment. Let's jump over to Linux Mint and check out some of their customization options in there. Alright guys, that actually took me a really long time. Apparently it didn't install correctly and the virtual machine wouldn't boot up. So, 
we're just gonna run it in the live one just to show some of the options for customization in Linux Mint Cinnamon. So let's go here and let's go to backgrounds and change the background to the uh, the steering wheel. Just nice scenery, I guess. I don't know why I closed out of the settings menu. But let's go here and change the uh, Put it there. Get some blue folders going. Change this to blue to match that. Make that that. And then change that to aqua. So you could completely change up how the entire system looks like that. So which is kind of neat. You could install, most likely install more themes yeah you could uh my cache is out of date let's do that so yeah you can download more themes right from here and s configure that with your Linux Mint Cinnamon and then there's distributions like elementary OS where you can't install anything for themes so you're just st stuck with what they come with so Elementary OS is not the customizable one of the um, Ubuntu distributions, Ubuntu based distributions. So that was the pros of running an Ubuntu or an Ubuntu based distro. This is not Linux uh, Mint Debian Edition, this is Ubuntu Linux Mint, but it's also running on a live live CD because it didn't install correctly for some reason in the uh, I don't know what happened it wouldn't boot so given that there is pros there's also some cons con number one actually is some distributions won't allow additional repositories given that um here you can just um yeah, I'm, I don't know this uh, package manager as well. Not that. I don't know where to do it in here, but you could add a. Yeah, apt add repository and then um, your repository. But then there's a distribution like elementary OS that when you try to do it, it doesn't work. So. To prove that point, let's jump over to Elementary OS to view that. Okay guys, here is Elementary OS, a clean install. This isn't actually installed correctly, unlike Linux Mint, I don't know what happened there. But, I'm pressing tab right now and there's no... Uh, See, command not found. It doesn't want you to add additional repositories. There's a way you can get around it, but by default, it won't let you. And then, pro number three was uh, customizable, so if you look in the settings, there isn't even an option for themes. And there's not a whole lot of third-party theme support out there to begin with. With um, elementary tweaks, all it really does is you can move around that the stuff and configure some additional things. With the const editor, you can make desktop icons, but nothing too fancy. That's probably the most customizing you can do right there. I'm just kind of hating on elementary right now because the lack of customizability for it. So... That was con number one, um, the distributions, some of them do not allow additional repositories. Elementary right now is one of the only ones I know that does not. There might be other ones out there, but elementary is the big one. That was con number one. Con number two is Ubuntu, the regular Ubuntu, has been caught with telemetry. I don't know if they uh, still do like still pull data like that but Ubuntu within itself 
Let's go jump over there really quick. Alright guys, we got the Ubuntu booting up. So, the con number two, Ubuntu has been caught with telemetry. When we get this all booted up, I will um, go on Firefox and read a little bit more about it. But, I have saw some reports that Ubuntu has been collecting data. I don't know if they still do it. But, I really don't like this gnome, the new gnome. I like Unity a lot better. But, I kind of got off traffic, um, off uh, track there. But, um, I butchered the spelling most likely, yep. Yep, right here, Ubuntu uh, reveals desktop telemetry. Click on here really quick. Canonical has kept the promise and made a, that some uh, made public that some telemetry is gathered. Now this is 1804. The um. Ubuntu that I'm running. I don't know if it still does. But I know in 1604 they were collecting data. You could opt out of it, but by default it was um it was collecting data. So that was pro number um not pro, that was con number two. Con number three, the final con is it can be heavier on your system resources depending on the desktop environment you choose that is um, this is GNOME, GNOME is usually known to be a heavier desktop you could get light ones like Ubuntu Mate or Linux Mint Mate um, or download regular Ubuntu and put i3 or something light on it it's pretty easy to do just in the terminal sudo apt install uh, i3 but some things in a kernel can be a little heavier as well but they're just depending on the Linux distro that you choose so that was the pros and cons of running Ubuntu or an Ubuntu based Linux distribution I hope you enjoyed I'll catch you in the next one